So let's end this sequence of videos just by walking through one final example that I worked in MATLAB. This is the signal that we're calling G of T. So this black line right here is this smoothly uh, varying signal G of T. And it actually just consists of two different sinusoid frequencies. So it's really just two sin sinusoids added up. And what we're doing here is we are performing impulse sampling. Now, all this was done in MATLAB. So G of T, even though it looks very smooth and continuous, it was done on a computer. So technically, it's still a discrete time signal. But it's so oversampled, we're going to think about it as a continuous time signal. And the blue lines right here are what I'm calling the impulse sample version of G of T. I basically just put zeros and then grabbed a value, put zeros and grabbed a value, put zeros and grabbed a value in MATLAB. Okay. So this is what we do when we impulse sample, right? We take this original continuous time signal and we grab values periodically in time. And those are what we call the impulse sampled values of the signal. In the main, what happens? Well, this is what the original spectrum looked like. If I zoomed in here, I'm not going to do it because I'm just talking on slides right now. I'm not actually in MATLAB. If I zoomed in here, you would see two peaks, one peak corresponding to one frequency and one peak corresponding to the other frequency of the two terms that comprise G of T. The important part here is we know what happens when we sample G of T. When we sample G of T, this spectrum is going to get repeated up and down the frequency axis at multiples of our sampling rate. That is exactly what happens. Here is the spectrum of the impulse sampled signal G of T. So I am sampling here obviously at a frequency of 50 Hertz because this original spectrum is getting replicated in multiples of 50 all up and down the frequency axis. Okay. So that is what my impulse sampled spectrum looks like. If to reconstruct this signal, what do I need to do? Well, I would need to get rid of all the images. So these are the images here, 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 here. All these are the images up and down for forever. I would need to get rid of those. And I would want to perfectly pass the original spectrum. What is, so in other words, that means I would need a low pass filter, this red line right here, that looks like this. It perfectly passes my original spectrum and perfectly rejects all of these images. To do that in MATLAB, I end up with this red curve right here. So my original signal was the blue line, which you can almost see here at the edges. There are some uh, filtering effects there. And this original, or, and then the ideal reconstructed signal is in red. And indeed, the red signal is right on top of the blue signal, except for some things right at the edge due to the finite length of the uh, filter impulse response and some other things like that. But essentially, I have reconstructed the original signal from the impulse sampled version of the signal. Let's do this again, but let's do it with a zero order hold sampler. So remember what the zero order hold amplitude response looks like. It has this taper in the uh, main lobe that distorts things, and it also has um, frequency distortions out here that knock down the images. This is what the amplitude response of that zero order hold filter was. So when I sample the signal using a zero order hold technique, I don't get impulses everywhere. I get this kind of staircase because that's what the zero order hold filter does. It grabs a value and holds it, grabs a value and holds it, grabs a value and holds it. In the frequency domain, my zero order hold sampled signal looks like this. My original spectrum gets replicated up and down the frequency axis, but because of the amplitude characteristics of the zero order hold filter, they don't have the same amplitude, they get knocked down based on the amplitude response of the zero order hold filter. So that's what we saw in cartoons earlier with the triangles. If you remember, we had triangle and then these triangles that kind of decayed in frequency. Now we don't have a triangle, we really have a spectrum that comprises of basically two impulses and those two impulses are getting repeated up and down the axis. If I want to recover this signal, what do I need to do? Well, I need to remove all the images and also undo the distortion introduced by the zero order hold filter. If I do that, then I get back this red line right here. And again, I have gotten very close to recovering the original signal from the sampled signal. This time though, instead of impulse samples, it was a zero order hold sampled signal. Okay, so that kind of wraps up this set of charts with kind of a MATLAB example 
and it really encompasses everything we've talked about. What happens when you sample? The original spectrum gets re replicated in the frequency domain, and that's why we need to sample at a rate to avoid aliasing. If I have samples, how do I go back to my original signal? Well, I need to run it through a filter. That's usually easiest to think about in the frequency domain. That filter gets rid of all those replicated images, and it also undoes any distortion that might have occurred on the original spectrum. This MATLAB example just kind of walked through in pictures those different processes, what it means to sample, what it means to reconstruct, and showed you, you know, what these different things looked like. And as practice, you know, go code something up like this yourself in MATLAB and uh, get some practice with both sampling and reconstructing filters by running a sampled signal through a uh, filter and trying to make pictures that look like this where you can convince yourself that you know how to perform this sampling and reconstructing process yourself. And that concludes our sequence of videos on sampling and reconstructing continuous time signals.